discuss pressure systems. This is the first part of looking at weather maps. And in this particular part of the video, we'll discuss why there are H's and L's on a weather map and what's really going on in those locations. Let's start with a review. Anywhere you have a high pressure situation um, in the atmosphere, that's sinking air. In other words, the air is actually coming out of the atmosphere and descending towards the ground. In doing that, it's warming up, and as it warms up and compressing, it loses its water vapor and it clears the sky. So a high pressure system will always be associated with clear skies because the air is descending out of the atmosphere. The opposite would be a low pressure situation where air is rising. Now in the process of rising, it's cooling down. And as it cools down, as it, because it's expanding, it cools to that dew point temperature and becomes clouds and those clouds can lead to precipitation when enough water vapor is present. So at a low pressure area, you have rising air that is creating cloudy skies or at least um, more clouds if they're not present already so stormy conditions low pressure clear skies high pressure right there you can predict the weather you can do it i promise so let's take a look at a weather map and actually look into what's going on at these two different types of pressure systems uh, some terms and some information that you need to have uh, when we talk about high pressure, we're talking about an anticyclone or a clockwise spinning zone of air. And as we already said, air that's descending. So all those things are going on at a high pressure zone. At a low pressure zone, we have a cyclonic weather or a cyclone, with a wind that's blowing counterclockwise and air that's ascending. Okay. Um, so clockwise meaning going to the left like a clock, counterclockwise meaning going the opposite direction against the clock to the right. Uh, just looking at it a different way, you have low pressure here on the left, that's air ascending coming up from the surface, and on the right you have high pressure which is air descending coming down from the atmosphere. So once again, let's look at our weather map. Let's zoom in on a high pressure zone. There's three of them back to back here. Uh, at any one of those high pressure zones, notice how there's no green associated with them. There's nothing kind of in the area. It's just the ground, so to speak. That's because high pressure situations or high pressure systems are associated with clear skies. So the air here is spinning or, you know, um, descending from the atmosphere in a clockwise pattern and to get here or I should say to get away from here because it's high pressure air is gonna you know diverge from this place uh, the air is gonna flow out but because we're in the northern hemisphere and the earth is spinning it can't simply go in a straight line it can't do that it's got to go in a curve so if I were to look at all the air coming out of a high pressure zone it would look something like this um, they're all curved to the right because we're in the northern hemisphere. And um, where's that air going? Well, it's gonna seek out a low pressure zone. So if I were to trace the paths of any of those white arrows, so to speak, they'd be seeking out a low pressure or a lower pressure that's nearby. So that's what's happening at a high pressure zone, high pressure systems, air's descending, coming out of the atmosphere, clear skies, and blowing outwards. At a low pressure zone, we have rising air and air that's rising counterclockwise as it goes up into the atmosphere. Just like with the high pressure zones, we have the curvature of the Earth and the spinning of the Earth that lead to the Coriolis effect and the, and the curving of wind patterns uh, as they head towards the low pressure. Now, why is the wind heading towards the low pressure? Well, it's a low pressure air always flows from high to low. So this is a source, I'm sorry, this is a sink where air is moving to an area of convergence because uh, air is trying to get here. There's more room for it because it's rising in the atmosphere, 
it's opening up more room for air to move there. So if I were to fill in the rest of the arrows, that's what they would look like, all curving to the right, but curving inward towards the low pressure zone as the air is rising. And where is it coming from? It's coming from a high pressure system that's nearby. Anywhere where the air is flowing away, it's going from high to low pressure. And that's basically it. That's what's happening uh, with H's and L's on a weather map. They're high and low pressure systems, and they tell you a lot about what's going on. Um, for instance, here with this low pressure system, notice all the green and the different colored triangles and circular, you know, all that nonsense hit there is a weather event. And if you look to the east of it, you could see more green. And notice how there's only L's there as well. So, you know, what we're going into next will also add to this conversation, but, you know, low pressure systems are associated with most weather events that are associated with rain or precipitation. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Question. So we're talking high pressure and low pressure. She's saying, why is high pressure associated with clear skies and light winds and low pressure associated with storms and rain? Well, we're going to put it, toge put it uh, together this way. You have to look at weather as three-dimensional. That's the key here. That was one of the most difficult things when I went to college when they started talking about the weather in three dimensions. I was so used to just staring at weather maps that I'd see in the newspaper here um, down at the ground. But everything at the ground is occurring by what's happening aloft here. So let's look at the jet stream. This is the jet stream here. And this is high and low pressure here. Now you have to understand the water cycle too. The water cycle is as air rises, it will cool and then condense because it, it encounters lower pressure. So the higher air rises, the pressure goes from high pressure to low pressure. You get less pressure, less temperature. It cools and condenses, makes clouds. So wherever there's rising air, we get precipitation. This is what's happening in the jet stream aloft. Here we'll have a convergence zone aloft here. That's when the jet stream winds are con coming together. So as you push the air together, it has nowhere else to go. It can't go up, so it has to go down. And so what happens is we have sinking air, and the air sinks, and it sinks clockwise. So it subsides, as we call it, subsidence. As it's sinking, it warms because it encounters the higher pressure near the ground, and that sinking air also causes a big bubble of high pressure to form here. So sinking air near the high pressure warms and dries, and so you don't have any cloud cover out. We had that pretty much during the day today. As the jet stream is going along, it'll encounter an area where it diverges aloft, and so it separates the air here. We can't have a void. We can't make a vacuum of no air. So something has to replace the air right here, and so air comes up from the ground. So what happens is high pressure now has been over over here, so that wind comes out of high pressure, it goes into low pressure counterclockwise, it gets to the middle with nowhere else to go, and it rises to fill this void right here. And so near low pressure, we have rising air, and rising air will then cool and condense and make clouds and precipitation, so you basically have rising air causing clouds and rain, while sinking air is generally dry as it warms up. And if you look at high pressure, low pressure on the ground at the surface here, you also have wind that forms between the two. And as I mentioned to the kids, if I take a room and we fill it up with air, we seal it off and we pump a bunch of air pressure inside the room, then we open the door, the air will rush from high pressure to low pressure outside the door. And because the earth is spinning, it goes around clockwise like this. And so we added a little bit extra here, but generally stormy not stormy. That's what you got to take away from that, Don. We don't get quizzed on this, do we?